What is going on guys? Wiser here coming to you with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was an arranged matchup against the North Watchers, the fine ladies and gentlemen over there. Uh, we are looking forward to this one. Uh, we've really been working on our um, sort of invite season roster, uh, bringing guys up from Invicta and Swarm, letting them, uh, giving everybody shots, especially at the Town Hall 9 level. We've got a lot of movement, we'll just say. Um, and I think this is our group because uh, let's jump on over and check this out and 110 110 so i did want to mention i do have a little special guest star with me uh the one and only mcgrady how's it going buddy hey how is it going wiser everything's awesome. fine here in awesome. barcelona yeah good old barcelona how's the, how's the weather we're getting snow today actually we've had the best winter ever and then all of a sudden we're getting snow in march so that kind of sucks it's weird here it, it was also colder than it used to be but like uh last week it was so hot that you could go to the beach even so really nice yep i'm actually going and taking the wife to cuba next week i'm excited yeah that, that sounds like exciting trip man. yeah leaving on tuesday going to cayo coco so we're looking forward to that but anyways welcome uh reason i brought grady on is because i sort of uh, had some mishaps uh as this war was going on it was my wife's birthday and we went out and wiser had a little too much fun we'll just say and was <laughs> pretty non-existent for the entire 24 hours after that so i had to get guys to do my attacks but from what i gather i probably picked the worst time to do that because the end of this war was epic i don't know what uh, your perspective was on it grady but from what i'm hearing well, dude one of the best clash moments uh in a long time for us jp and the guys who were remembering about how this ended and uh <coughs> show it show it one of those memorable wars like i'm looking at the de the details right now right 30 uh, 33 stars a piece uh, you know we we edge them on destruction by by quite a bit actually um you know that 2.12 is a, a reasonably amount of uh, a percentage so or i don't know if i said that right a reasonable yeah. amount of extra percentage um so that was good for us but you look at the war events as looking so in the last 20 well, let's say the last 30 minutes of the war there was like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve attacks at least um not to mention the last 10 minutes last you know yeah last 10 minutes they had this attack after attack after attack after attack and i can only imagine what it looked like from our side because we only had one attack left and it was a town hall 10 attack uh we're planning for that hopefully getting that triple but as we're as we're planning for the triple we're watching the end of the war unfold and it's like they're slowly catching up one extra star one extra star two more stars one more star two more stars and then it's tie game and we have one attack left or not even tie game we're down by one star and we have one attack left not only that, it was an account that didn't have max troops and the uh, heroes were low, so oh, yeah. we kind of had n not much pressure. We were like, okay, let's try and find the best perfect plan that doesn't rely on heroes. Okay, that, but we will talk about that when we see it. So yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we'll go into a little more detail on the town hall ten attacks um, when we get there. Let's just rip through a few of these town hall nine attacks first. Uh, there were a few good ones. We did not need any bullies, right? We, we finished off nope. the last one. Perfect. So that's good. Um, like I was mentioning, we've been shuffling a lot of guys around, really trying to prep and find our good core group that we want to bring into our invite season. And uh, I think we've, we've, we've done a pretty good job now in getting uh, our Town Hall 9 group together. And obviously it's starting to show because we're clearing the 9s once again. We've had our struggles in the past uh, handful of wars, we'll just say. Um, but let's just jump right in and check out number 38 right at the bottom here. Uh, Big D. Uh, this is one of our recent uh, guys that's come up from Invicta. Uh, he's good. He's good shit. Uh, I've always been a Big D supporter. I know you have as well, Grady, since the day he uh, came up from Swarm. Yes, man. Perfect team player. Really helpful. And, um, well, he's getting every day better and better in his TH9 attacks, as you can see. Absolutely. So he's bringing, he just brings a shattered uh, hobo here with 26 hogs. I think hogs, you know, especially with the recent update, um, obviously witches, we're going to talk about that in the next attack or one of the next attacks when we see the, the predominant use of bitch. But hogs are looking real good at Town Hall 9. And uh, you got a lot of options now in Town Hall 9 because obviously Lalo is still king. Um, 
it's, it's Lalo, right? It's so strong. But you got a lot of options now on bases. Yeah, man, as you can see, like, I remember those surgical attacks that we did back in the day where we should take into account the spring traps, but then you knew how many uh, hawks you could send to each defense. Uh, now it seems even more uh, stronger than, than that time. If a base calls for it, you can go surgical and you can send uh, less hawks or the same hawks, but they gotta, they will have more health. Yeah. And uh, that makes you, uh, enables you to, let's say, like push your heels a little bit deeper onto the base and thus uh, making them survive even more than what they already do. I like Big D's sort of very patient job here with his hogs and his heal spells. Um, you, you can see he just sort of few at a time, few at a time, right? Getting the heals in the right spots, keeping the hogs moving through the base, and look at how many he's got left at the end. He did bring 26, mind you, but uh, he, yeah, huge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, huge thing, huge thing, and uh, the, the thing to take into account here is like uh, if he time everything right, he can collapse the hogs and avoid bombs just like he did, and it's a stomp. Yeah, absolutely, it's a tree in the bag for Big D. <clears throat> Love having this guy in 2.0. Just a lot of you know. Briefly, going to mention you know uh, for those of us that follow 2.0, we we went through some major changes. We lost some guys that that were in the clan for a long time, and it sucks. It's not a good thing ever. But in the same token. We got a good new life force flowing through 2.0 right now, and it, it's showing. Like just the communication in all the chats is is phenomenal right now, and uh, I'm I'm liking the direction our clan is now headed in. To be honest. Yeah, man, we had a, a rough month, I say, a little bit more than a month. Uh, we cannot summarize it here in, in just a minute, yeah. uh, but it has been a lot of things that we have been through. So it feels nice to see something like a three star by sports buff. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, SP is bringing the, uh, the stone entry here. Um, very heavy, you know, eight wizards. Uh, you're going to see him go down at the uh, eight o'clock location here, gets two on that two in that Tesla farm at nine o'clock and another goal. I'm down on the mortar down at six spreading all those wizards around usual business. But what I liked about this was he basically gets this entire side cleared off. Actually, I think he does leave that dark elixir drill, which would have worried me a bit because of the bowlers. I always am, am weary of the jump spell right into the base. You know what I mean? Uh, Cause a lot of times at this point right here, if his bowlers didn't take a step towards that Tesla, there's a good chance they might have just walked down to that dark elixir drill, but you can see some of them even go up on around nine o'clock, right? So it, it's always yep. always tricky, I find, when you're just jumping right into the base, because a lot of times uh, your queen and the bowlers specifically seem to want to dodge the jump. Yeah, especially with the expo compartment, like it's placed, um, it's it, it's very mimicking of uh, an inferno compartment. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's specially designed for for your queen and bowlers to be um, not in range of that, and or just having a hard time going through that if if you don't have a big enough funnel. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, but uh, not fully for SB here, and he's got so many hogs now. A few of them go up to this Tesla up here at uh, 12 o'clock, but there's only a couple defenses left. He's got a wizard and three archers still. Still has that queen ability intact, so definitely this base is uh, is going down at this point. Doesn't stand a chance. A few archers in the corner. Now that's Grady's specialty, as we're going to see here in a few moments. <laughs> yeah, man. Fast forward. If you didn't know, an archer takes twelve hits to kill a builder's hut. Yeah, and it shoots one. It shoots one shot per second. Yep. So twelve seconds to to, to take a builder's hut down, <laughs> which is yep. very important uh, to know. As as you I know here. Yeah, man. Uh, Sometimes it's crucial. Okay. Let's show. I think I got one more here at Town Hall Nine. I did want to show. Let's check out Dally Boy. Classy, classy guy. Dolly Boy is a classy guy. Very classy. Uh, again, uh, one, a lot of these core guys that we have that really, really stuck with us through our tough times um, and came out stronger on the other side. Uh, Dolly Boy is Dolly Boy's one of those guys, you know, been very uh, open and honest with us through everything. And, uh, you know, love having love having these guys on board because, you know, once, once, you're, once your comrades go through tough times with you like that, there's very little that, that – it, 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 that loyalty is immediately 100% confirmed for a very long time. 
Um, yeah, man, I agree. And uh, he just recently today, he shared a personal story with the rest of the clan. Uh, and uh, it shows that he feels very um, warm and welcome. Yeah, and comfortable. Here. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, well, as comfortable as he is using the witches, it seems. Yeah, yeah so 12 witches at Town Hall 9. It is back, guys. Um, it was difficult for me to find other replays outside of these bitch attacks. Uh, one thing, they're boring as hell. I'm not going to lie. You're, <laughs> you're, you're clumping these witches out with healers on the outside. Uh, the thing is, these wizard towers, like if you see down at the uh, sort of 7 o'clock, 7.30 location, the witches under the heels are just mowing down a wizard tower. as it, it It's killing the skeletons, but it, it, they cannot touch the witches, right? As long as the healers are staying out of range of those air defenses, your witches are going to be fine. Another thing I was mentioning, Grady, is huge threat to witches is giant bombs, but when you have... Frick, one, two, three, four. Like, he's got probably 10 witches of his witches all on the outside of the base. Well, you know they're not going to be stepping on any uh, G giant, double giant bombs. They're not going to... Like even a bomb tower is going to be a threat to them, and they have no worries about any of that. So yeah, man, I guess that this changes the TH9 meta a little bit, yeah. but uh, beware of the new update that will come uh, likely in April. Uh, Supercell has been announcing it, and uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how witches. Yeah, yeah, it's really tough to say. Um, I do like having them a little more strong because whenever I see things that sort of you look at Town Hall Nine, you're like, well. That's kind of overpowered and stupid for Town Hall 9, but you know it's going to uh, ripple effect up to Town Hall 10 and, and give a little more options to Town Hall 10s, uh, which I think is the main focus of the game right now, at least in, in, in the competitive war scene. It's all about Town Hall 10 versus 10, so just having a few more tricks Absolutely. In the bag is always a nice Absolutely. thing. I used to be such a Town Hall 9 supporter and always get upset if they sort of imbalance Town Hall 9 a little bit, but nowadays it's like, it's got to happen to make Town Hall 10 make it. Yeah, still, it's still the TH9s give the foundation of the war, and they need to. They, there's some pressure for, for you to perform at TH9, and they'll be perfect on your attacks, perfect on your execu execution, and not make stupid mistakes. So, yep. Well, and, and very innovative base designers are going to come up with defenses for these bitch attacks. Um, I don't have enough foresight yet to to know to be able to say what that's going to be exactly, but you know damn well some of these insanely yeah. creative guys are going to uh, are going to come up with defensive bases for that. So we'll see how that pans out over the next. Probably while. traps on the outside, but yeah. you've got to be careful, like springs or bombs. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll yep. see how it is. It is bobs. Check out Mr. Chad Fowler, aka Armor Queen, going in on this base. Uh, level one Infernos, right? So. Whenever you're, we're in a war, when we see level one or two Infernos, we absolutely are in the mindset we're trying to lock those bases down as 10 versus 10 triples. There's no excuse for us not to. Um, so nice to see Chad just coming in and rocking a base like this. Um, this sort of very offset air defense base, very common, what you're going to be seeing these days. Uh, I like the idea. I, I like how Chad breaks the wall up here. You're going to see it uh, work out here in a second. And his queen just steps like, because she um, she's gonna target this cannon, I think, or the air defense maybe. Well, so once it is open, the next closest one should be the oh, cannon. Sorry, she he's tries to. Yeah, she targets that. Oh, see, she targeted the air defense. That's crazy. <laughs> it makes no sense. At no, all. but she. But I, I thought it was funny because she walks like right into the middle of all three of those cannons just to go get that air defense. So. <laughs> but nice poison goes down. She's okay. Rage is down. Keeping those healers going on her. She's going to work through this pup or through these pups. Yep. And Dropping a minion good. to help. Yep. yep. That was nice. Uh, those cute little level four minions that he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. The light blue minis. But the queen's job is done, right? She's going to end up getting this other air defense. Um, so he goes ahead and sends the suicide king in with a couple wizards. The idea here is just he's creating the funnel now for his dragons now at six o'clock. <clears throat> which is done so he's going to go ahead and send in the lava hound lock it right onto this uh tesla which is perfect because now the defensive queen is going to lock onto that lava hound and allow these dragons to work into the base they're going to take down that queen here and blam a couple shots exactly that's one of the adjustments that sometimes you do on dragon attacks is like should i bring a lava hound or not and uh the idea was uh since it, he was starting where uh, a lot of point defenses were it makes sense to to save the health of the dragons 
uh, <laughs> and yet that's what he did. And then the infer the the freeze. I remember we were talking about this. Uh, it did we get don't really the wizard know. tower. Yeah. I don't know if it was like see how low the health those dragons were. It did freeze the wizard tower while that clump of dragons was right there. So who knows? We are questioning the use of that freeze because imagine just having a rage right now to drop in between the inferno and the rest of these defenses. Dragons would just blast through that stuff just instantly. But how do you critique the the three star? Oh man, you cannot. No. Still has. And at this point, so he's got 20, 40, 60 troop space, plus his queen with the healers going, plus that max CC dragon and the good old archer in the corner. So just crushed it, Fowler. Nice job, buddy. Very, very good adjustments. Yeah. Now, was that. We did have an exposed base that was uh, in a YouTube recap from a prior but, war for them. Yeah, I there were two of them. This, yeah, ob obviously. Uh, like, yeah. Th this was one. Like, uh, the one that we just saw was one of the exposed spaces, and the other one was uh, 16. Okay. Um, well, we'll go check. Let's check out. I think we got 16 and 11 we're going to show. Um, this number 18 was the one uh, that we three started at the very end of the war that won the war for us. So, we're going to actually take you through the progression. Let's just jump right up to what did I say? 16? Hey, I know Mick this guy. G. So this was the other one that we had the plan for. You had actually used my account with Max Heroes and didn't get it, but uh, yep. ha had enough knowledge then about sort of how you needed to place your troops to use a uh, use a level thirty two king and get the job done. So nice job with that. You're going to suicide in from twelve o'clock. Uh, what do you think the big differences were uh, from using uh, JPW versus McGrady? Uh, basically, it was the Lalo part. I think that my Lalo is not as good as JP's, for instance. Yep. I, I think that uh, I'm more comfortable using uh, ground troops, especially on TH9s. But hey, it's all about Lalo now. And uh, this part, the small bulk squad with rage, uh, when you get value on those and you get an, uh, the um, Queen, Air Defense, and Inferno out of that little a squad that's perfect that and then great. the lalo part yeah that that's the part i did much much better the second time around you said something the about the six o'clock hound there yeah exactly the six o'clock hound i i made him i made him protect my loons which i didn't on my first attack with jpw my haste was much better the the, the two initial ones uh and uh my my loon my loon deployment uh it was much better than this time but uh, the, the guy on youtube had a very uh, on youtube had a very like, similar uh, attack with uh, the same Lalo basically and uh, the change the main change I did it was the hound uh, that guy sent it to six o'clock location mm -hmm. I sent it to three and the reason being is that my um, my loons as you can see with this heel uh, are going to finish there and they are going to start their cleanup part at that, at that location so that's uh that's the location i want the hound to be in since the loons there's are nothing not that's going to target, target the hound exactly. all your pups are going to be doing cleanup right on the outside exactly um, and there's a couple of uh, hero pups that are killing the cc in the middle i have one minute left i had one archer left and i was looking at that freaking builders had that nine <laughs> right there and oh, uh man. As you can see, that's 45, 45 seconds left, something like that. And I'm just looking. There was there was less than one second remaining, right? Yeah, man. Uh, like uh, it's almost the same uh, as the how much time was left. I think that was uh, one second more or something like that. So I'm looking at my pups. I'm waiting, and I'm very fearful about the hound going towards the middle of the base and messing up with my pups, killing stuff. My uh, my loons are slow, but they will get towards that location. But still, I need to kill the spell factory. So I was like. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Thirteen now. seconds. Thirteen seconds. You dropped it. With so if there's, you know, it takes twelve seconds. You, you gave yourself one second to spare. I don't know. I think you might have like it was better to be safe, right, with it. But if you had, you might have been able to drop it earlier without it getting all the way over. But the thing yeah. is, at the same time, if you dropped it too early and say the hound got to the middle. Well, it could have drawn other pups onto the right that would have prevented the yep. pups from doing their cleanup as well. Yep. So. <laughs> but we could cherish the three star. Absolutely. So, nice job, my that's friend. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, man, it's got to feel good in a war like this.
Uh, especially that level 32 king. All right, so yeah. let's check out Val. I love Val. I was just talking about him when I did the War 101 recap, and he did this uh, sort of, uh, he did a double zap quake with uh, like five dragons, a hound, and 16 balloons. Um, or maybe he didn't even, yeah, he did bring a hound. Uh, just was a really creative attack. Is that Town Hall 9? Obviously not Town Hall 10, but I was just talking. I can always count on Valve for bringing some sort of different attack <laughs> other than the, the mainstream sort of uh, meta attack, we'll just say. Absolutely. And this was a, a joint effort by our one of uh, the newest guys that we have, uh, Blaine. He's helping us. He has another account in Emphatic Lit, if I did not uh, say that incorrectly. Definitely want to give and, Blaine uh, a shout out because uh, pleasure having that guy aboard. Even uh, this was his fourth war with us and his help was invaluable. Just uh, the way he was active in helping plans and stuff from what I've been told was uh, awesome. So uh, pleasure to have you, Blaine. Thanks for uh, helping us plan this one. Biggest part of about this was the zap quake on that level three inferno or sorry it was just a triple zap right or no it was triple zap with a quake triple zap yeah triple zap with a quake and then the suicide queen so he can get a couple of defenses and the air defense and the defenses are important as well because they make the the lalo so the much path. i'm gonna clear pause it. i'm gonna pause it real fast so he's he's also then sent in sort of the suicide king to take care of the defensive queen uh pull a cc out but it doesn't matter he doesn't even want the cc to die so it's nice because uh you know, that hound is not going to burst. But you look at the pathing now for the balloons at this screen. If you send them from where he does, it, you're trying to create that L shape. Well, this dead zone and the fact that this compartment's dead per creates this perfect L shape to the base. And there's no sweeper, so it's very clear there which you go. is the yeah. way to go. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So here comes that hound from 10 o'clock. A couple balloons on each defense, looking good, triggering those red mines as well so that's great <clears throat> nice little haste spell the only thing i would have been concerned was a uh, was the queen at this point i i think yep he didn't get it he didn't get it and uh, he was planning to get it but he didn't With the king, uh, yeah. yep but yep. it didn't matter at the very end no the the uh, balloons and the hound did enough tanking for the pups to take down the queen because he did do damage to the queen so it only had like a third of it a third of her health left but great pathing as you can see just gets the reinforced balloons now in for four o'clock nice little hay spells gets that last inferno down gets that air defense number four to go down a little bit scary with those double wizard towers there but has far too many balloons, but if that wizard tower had like two more seconds, three more seconds, it could have been trouble. But it could have been. He kept he kept some loons for the back end, but um, he got it anyway. He had way too many. Just perfect. just crushed it. Nice job, Val. Very very nice job. Boom. All right. So. <clears throat> Time to see the devil, the devil, the devil, whatever. I cannot pronounce this word in English. This, uh, so what, which word? The one, like this bright diamond that we had at the very end. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so let's go check out the first hit on it. Um, not war results. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. We had, uh, we had Jacob hit it sort of earlier on. Uh, you had a few hours left, I think. There it yeah. Is. So almost four hours left in the war. So you guys were sort of planning this one for a while. Well, actually, it was all Jacob that he came up with the plan, the entry, uh, the bowler push uh, from this location that he's starting the golem. The, that that's the first thing that we wanted to improve on the funnel. I think that uh, you don't need to send a golem that early because it gets um, lower health without uh, much of a reason. Yeah, and that king that, locks on like instantly. Yeah, but the baby dragon at nine, it like that guy lives forever and gets a lot of job done. So as you can see, the boulders are going in. There's a very deep push. They can reach the air defenses and the queen going from the outside, reaching one of the air defenses and also killing a bit of trash, plus uh, the wizard tower. And plus, the, plus the, the 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 nice part and the reason he did that, I will point out, is he did that to keep his queen away from that hound in the core. Yep. Um, but as you can see, 
he ahead. brings a couple of hounds. So, sorry to interrupt you. Like no. uh, the hounds didn't path uh, as good as he wanted, so the loons didn't have protection, and that's something very very important for a lot of attack uh, at this level. Like you cannot make um, um, one tile mistakes. Uh, like that. It was very hard to make the Hound go towards the Inferno. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, it was very difficult to recover. And uh, as you can see, um, that's what what happened to him. Like, uh, too many loons die. Yeah, he needed that first pack of loons to take that Inferno Tower out. And um, yep. he needed the tanking. Like, he lost, I think it was like four or five balloons at least that he, the initial ones he sent to try and help protect his queen as well. Um, exactly. So, so our... our our idea when we when we saw that it was like the push is perfect uh but we need to change a little bit the back end like the the lalo doesn't seem so easy so uh, maybe it's time to try something else Dif same entry but why don't we use dragons on this base like uh we don't have more more than uh let's say a spell or two for the dragons but hey they should work just fine yeah so that's what we tried just when was about to finish. <laughs> uh, so then we got McGrady going in. Yep. As you can see, the entry is very similar. But you got six dragons. Um, yep. And one hound with eight balloons. Right? No, not not, the, not a hound. Oh, it's not bowlers. A hound. It's bowlers. It's bowlers. Yeah, yeah, like it's a heavy push. As you can see, the the golem is much delayed. Uh, so rather than being half health here, uh, it is full health. Yep. So he kind of makes a little bit of a small walk, then he comes back again. You started your queen a little bit lower too. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Uh, um. It, it didn't really matter. No. I was more. Uh, it, it was more efficient. He used to wizards, and I didn't, so the queen was uh, needed to be a little bit lower. But that was about it. So as you can see, my push is getting something similar than than what he did, but my bowlers path a little bit differently, and they don't get the the uh, archer. No, yeah, what is it? They're exposed on the left side of that core, the upper up, upper side of that core, right? They they needed yeah. to be a little bit lower, and then. <laughs> you would have had a little well, more protection, but or with the bounces, with the bounces, th that was yeah. a, another of the options. I sent yeah. the loons in this fashion because um, there's two black bombs there, and I want the, those two gone. Um, at this point, I am looking decent, not perfect, but decent. But the hound distracts a couple of my dragons. My other dragons at top are battling the sweeper, and it's a little bit too much for them. I didn't think it was uh, initially. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but it was, especially with Jesus. those expos firing at all times to my dragons, nonstop firing. That hound uh, took out two dragons on its own. I didn't. Those pops went to town on those dragons. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's yep, not yep, quite yep. enough. Those sweepers too gave you a lot of shit. Um, so that was tough. That was actually a similar, um, because this back end is similar to how that base that you tripled of mine, where you were able to just basically send the dragon straight across that back end of the base, right? So, the power of a sweeper, man. Yeah. Now we realize the power of a sweeper. And there it goes. Last but not least, the last minute of the war to tie it and win on percentage JP decides to bring um, a Lava Hound with 21 balloons. Still has bowlers in the CC. Am I correct on that? Yes, you are correct. Well, not. We changed it. We used a Golem because this account didn't oh. have a max Golem. Yes. So that's why we brought a CC Golem. Uh, we, we thought it was more important to have a little bit of a... Of a extra tanking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that uh, level, a max level 9 uh, Golem wouldn't get us. So that's why we brought this one. And uh, as you can see, the push is a little bit deeper. He adds some bowlers on his troop composition. He drops a, a, a Lalo and he uses all the spells for the push, as you can see. The idea is we wanted to get as far as the Expos. We thought those were trouble. And um, Bowler yep. stayed in nice and tight in the corner. Only one wandered off and triggered that bomb by itself. So it did get really good just value on that whole kill squad now he's got that that hound moving right in standing right on top of that inferno tower at three so that's helping a lot too and just needs to path in right on top of his uh sweepers and he's looking pretty good at this point with 12 balloons still in the bag 
finally gets that Inferno Tower down. Yeah, and he had this idea to collapse everything on the Inferno Tower because we didn't have any spells for that. Yeah. And he's like, okay, my loons need to kill the defend the outside defenses. It All doesn't right. really matter if they soak up streams uh, and they get killed on their path towards there. I am fine with it. Uh, All I need is just one or two drops and then for my two back-end guys to go there. And this and... is what we were just talking about and pausing real fast. So... Right, uh, three seconds before this, he had his, like you said, these balloons were collapsing on these last few outer defenses, and then we're all going to path to the Inferno Tower. He still has three balloons on hand. I know for myself, like, look how low those balloons are on health, but he trusts it. He knows JP is so good with his Lalo. Um, he just knew the, the Inferno Tower was going down, and he could save those balloons for cleanup, and he needed them too, so... He also uses an archer to lure the hound elsewhere, and uh, he uses the cleanup loons perfectly on the perfect locations for him to uh, get the best, most efficient uh, cleanup. And that's when we went nuts. Here, he's instructing me to do that's a three star. Just go out and see how the other TH11 attacks that the uh, North Watchers yeah. was doing did. And uh, at this point. I, I locked off his attack, and we realized that this was the, the, the clincher, star. the war like, winning. We won. The war we winning, won. yeah, man. JP comes through at the end. I will say, because I do want to throw a little bit of a dig to uh, uh, a good old Brad on uh, Shadow Puppet on North Watchers. Talk to him on Twitter quite a bit. And if you take a look, oops, if you take a look in the war details, you're going to notice in that flurry of attacks from them in the last five minutes, 10 minutes of the war, Brad missed a 96% on Val's base. I'm sure he's still kicking him, kicking himself about that one. Um, but I will say then the number two, their number 211, be it bomb or B&M or whatever, uh, failed again. So that those two defenses from Val also were a huge contributor to the fact that we won this war. So, Yep. Yep, we didn't know that when we went in. We had no idea. Uh, it was very likely to be, uh, I don't know, 111 or 112 by these guys from North Watchers. But for some reason, we catch them on an off day and we, we fully took advantage of this huge win for us. Uh, we are very proud of this one and it, it sets up with, in a very good mood for the start of the CWL. Absolutely. So, uh, video is going kind of long already, but. Uh... Uh, I do want to touch real quickly. Uh, we do have our search uh, this Thursday night uh, against uh, Beast Mode. So we are gearing up for that when we know it is going to be a difficult, difficult one. But we, we absolutely want to come out firing and come out and try and get a 1-0 uh, start here in, in invite because it, it doesn't get too much easier. <laughs> we'll just say <laughs> as time yep. goes on, we got a lot of tough matchups mid-season. Um, and let's be honest, any clan in invite is, is going to be a challenge for us. So um, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll safely say we're the underdogs in, in every, every matchup, I would say, but be, watch out for us, guys, because because we're uh, we're getting our groove together now, and uh, a lot of our guys are uh, really starting to get get together and helping each other plan and and coming away with some results, as you can see. So, anything else you'd like to add there, Grady? No, definitely not much. But uh, we are trying to compete to the best of our abilities. We are uh, doing it with our family because we are uh, at this point we are friends more than just uh, the game and uh we are just having fun competing in these wars and that's what we're going to do more this than, season man more than just another number right yeah man <laughs> all right man well thanks for coming out it's always a pleasure having you thanks for having me yeah no worries but uh, that'll do it here for your wisdom from wiser guys just trying to help bag that next tree start till then i'm out